The polar sundial is one of the universal dials. That means that when one is properly constructed, it can be used anywhere on Earth. This type of sundial can be recognized by its parallel hour lines that are read from west to east. The hour range in this type of dial is limited to about 10 hours, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The three different line lengths on this sample dial represent hours, half hours, and quarter hours. It is called a polar dial because the shadow casting device, the gnomon, represents the Earth's polar axis. The shadow is cast across the dial plate that is parallel to that axis. An install dial has its gnomon aligned along the north-south meridian, geographic north, and the body of the dial will be set along the east-west axis. To introduce a few useful sundial terms, the shadow casting device is called the gnomon, the edge of the gnomon that actually casts that shadow is called the style, and where the line of the style meets the dial surface is called the substyle. An important design consideration for all dials is to consider how thick the gnomon is. One way to visualize this is to think of the noon line being as wide as the gnomon. In effect, that means that there are two styles casting a shadow east or west of that noon line. We can see in this photo overlay how the sun's shadow line is casting off the left or west style of the gnomon. In the case of the polar dial, the early hours of the day, such as 6 a.m., won't strike the dial surface. About 7 a.m. would be the earliest. As the sun gets higher in the sky through the day, the shadow will shorten towards solar noon when it will be directly overhead, no shadow on the dial at noon, and then it will start casting afternoon hours from the other style of the gnomon. We can use an equatorial dial to help understand how the design of these two dials are linked. It could be said that all dials are derived from the equatorial. This diagram shows an equatorial dial touching the horizontal plane of what will become a polar dial. The center of the equatorial, its gnomon, equals the height of the gnomon for the polar dial. The 15 degree hour segments of the equatorial are then extended until they contact the horizontal surface to become its hour lines. Placing the two dials in contact with one another, we can begin to see that overlapping relationship. This example is off a bit because the thickness of the two gnomons prevents them from being coincident. The hour lines from the equatorial dial are extended until they contact that horizontal line and are then drawn parallel across the polar dial's surface. Note that the lines are progressively further apart as we move away from noon. A simple verification of layout when you make a polar dial is to make sure that the height of the gnomon at the 12 o'clock line will match the distance to the 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock lines either side of it. That will form a 45 degree triangle. You can see here again that the width of the gnomon is being taken into account as the triangle is up against the right hand edge of the gnomon and measuring out to the center of the three o'clock line on the right. If we had centered the gnomon on the noon line without separation, the hour lines would all be off. This diagram is to reinforce the point that this is a universal dial and that we can use it at any latitude. To do this, the dial plate must stay parallel to the Earth's polar axis. This is done by tipping the plate at an angle equal to the latitude of the location. 90 degrees at the poles, 0 degrees at the equator, and from 0 to 90 in between. If we place this dial at the equator, 0 degrees latitude, it would lie flat and oriented north-south along the meridian of its location. If we then brought it to the North Pole, 90 degrees latitude, we would see that the dial would stand straight up. 
If we use this type of dial at the pole, we might actually make it a two-sided dial, since the sun will rotate completely around the dial for 24 hours in the summer. Being at the pole, it will work in alignment with any meridian that we select, since all meridians converge at the poles. Moving the dial to a less extreme latitude, such as 43 degrees, it would look like this. In the side view, we see how that angle is made. Positioning the dial equal to our latitude is the first of two steps needed to obtain accurate readings of solar time. The second step is to make sure that the dial is aligned with our meridian, that is, geographic north, not magnetic north. This can be done with a compass taking the local magnetic correction into account. Here I'm using a horizontal dial with a built-in compass to rotate and align the dials with geographic north. To simplify the alignment, the compass has the magnetic correction for this location 14.3 degrees west built into it. We can now see that both dials are aligned and reflect the same time. The shadows cast by the left or western style of both gnomons touch 9.05 a.m. The polar dial is now aligned for accurate readings of solar time at this location. Additional corrections would be needed to correlate solar time with clock time. That's explained in other video segments. Thanks again for joining me in the exploration of the polar sundial.